Welcome everyone to and a tea time. Podcast. We're here to talk about the expansion. We've had some, you know, some blog posts, right? Some reveals, some more information coming about the expansion. I kind of want to sum that up a little bit and, and talk about what we've actually seen develop and how the expansion is actually going to play out. How fast will people get through much of this content? When End of Dragons came out, I played for like 14 hours that day and went super hard at it. Mm. And I got through a lot of the stuff. I didn't get the turtle until like the next day. And, you know, we did beat Suwon, but it took us two attempts on NA, you know, stuff like that. But if it's smaller, will I be done in like six hours? What does smaller mean? I almost feel like they are setting rifts up for failure in this regard because first impressions matter. And if they bring in this oh, yeah. new feature, right? Like, oh look, rifts. This is this is you know, it's a, it, this is going to be a mastery. It's going to be one of the key expansion mechanics, right? And if they release and they suck and they're not interesting, I feel like that makes it super hard to kind of redeem them later on by um, iterating on them. Like if they if they if it doesn't. The chat has completely lost it. I mean, the, the chat is unhinged. I, I just want to point out that while you were giving, honestly, a really heartfelt emotional story, they were spamming pee pee poo poo. <laughs> Yo! Yo! <laughs> you know, yours was almost good, but then it got cut off. You might cut it off. So, you know, you. Oh, it, it did? Yo! <laughs> that was really loud, actually. Uh, they. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> we've yeah. got to yell yeah <laughs> everybody everybody with me one time yo <laughs> <laughs> okay so welcome everyone to and a tea time a very enthusiastic <laughs> greeting there to start us off welcome to the show everyone we're here to talk about the expansion actually um We've had some, you know, some blog posts, right? Some reveals, some more information coming about the expansion. I kind of want to sum that up a little bit and, and talk about what we've actually seen develop and how the expansion is actually going to play out and how different it's going to be from what we've had before and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I actually kind of wanted to, I, I think I, it's, it's a really good idea to let you introduce this topic, Sneb, actually, because I think you've been talking about how you've almost found it a little bit difficult to keep track of what exactly is releasing when. And, you know, that's not exactly what I want to focus on. I want to talk about the, the broader issue, but I think it's actually a really good place to start, actually, with the core yeah. ideas of what I want to talk about here. So. Tell us a little bit about about your kind of experiences dealing, you know, processing the expansion, Secrets of the Obscure, the new model. What's going on there? Yeah, I'll be really transparent and a little bit vulnerable here. I was actually a little bit concerned right before we started. I was like, Teapot, I don't, I just can't remember what's coming out at what time. <laughs> I get really confused and I just can't keep track of it. I know some of it's coming out in like six months, some of it's coming out in three months after the expansion that is, and then lots of it is coming out right at the expansion. But because there's been, they've, they've given out, out actually quite a lot of information in these mm. different blog posts. I just, I think I've been quite busy this summer. I tried to read and analyze, but I can't, it won't stick. There's just so much happening and it's all happening at different times. It's almost impossible for me to focus on what's, what's when. So I'm that that to start, I I think that's a problem. I think it's a problem that it's a little bit confusing. Now, maybe other people don't have this issue, but from the people that I've talked to in my Discord and stuff, they they're saying that yeah, they feel kind of similar. They know like some key things that are happening when, but for the most part, they couldn't tell you exactly when certain things are happening. For example, the additional weapons, right? They announced those additional weapons so early and people were really excited for them. And then and then they're like, "Oh, well they're not coming out, <clears throat> they're not coming out at launch, right? They're coming out like what is it, 3 months after launch or something?" Uh, something like that, yeah. I think the Three weapons... months, six months. See, we don't even know, right? We don't even know for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're exactly sure um when the the new weapons are coming out. I believe it's like the second release, which would be about 6 months after. I yeah. Think. So I think we're in a very interesting spot because what Arena has done is they have said, hey, we're making this expansion. It's a little bit smaller than other expansions that we've done, but we're going to continue releases after the initial release. 
which is almost like saying, hey, we're going to guarantee that there's new content continuously coming out, even in between mm. the different expansions on a quarterly update basis. That's really smart because it gives people something to anticipate and it lets them know that there's, they, ha they can have some faith that there will be constant new things. However, the issue is that one of the biggest critiques that people have is that it will be very, very small. And when you think about this critically, <laughs> You go, okay, well, they've announced a lot of stuff, but wait a second, not all of this stuff is coming out on release date. So what is coming out on release date? How much content will there actually be to play through? How fast will people get through much of this content? When End of Dragons came out, I played for like 14 hours that day and went super hard at it. Mm. And I got through a lot of the stuff. I didn't get the turtle until like the next day. And, you know, we did beat Suwon, but it took us two attempts on NA and you know, stuff like that. But if it's smaller, will I be done in like six hours? What does smaller mean? Hmm. It doesn't seem like there's going to be anything to prog because all the difficult content is, is being delayed, which kind of makes sense because you want people to get used to the normal mode and then have something to work for. But what is there to do hmm. what are you going to be doing at launch continuously is it riffs because my understanding and again still very confused but my understanding is that riffs are also tiered in some way and that the more difficult riffs are coming out later hmm. yeah i think that this is also very mirrored in kind of my question that i have about the expansion is what am i doing day two Right, like what is mm. going to be keeping me in this new content on day two? And it's entirely possible that we simply don't know yet, right? That that hasn't been revealed yet. But I also do think that this might just be a part of the adaptation towards this new model, right? The new model is very much going to be almost like an infinite living world season, I feel like. Like that's kind of where we're going mm. um, with this. So instead of having these like really big content drops and having some downtime, it's gonna be, okay, patch, 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 patch. It's just gonna go round and round and round like that, like all the time. And I think you can see that with a lot of the, the things that we were just talking about, right? Like on launch, you're getting your relics, you're getting your maps, your hub world, your normal mode strike missions. You've got your new masters to chase after, like the new skins, like you've got your elite spec uh, weapons being freed up. And then later, then they're going to add the challenge modes, a new fractal. They're adding a new map. Uh, they're adding the new weapons um, six months after launch or something like that, approximately, that kind of thing. Um, and this is, seems to be like the new paradigm. I think it is going to be very jarring to have this um, because I think it's going to go from like massive content, small content, small content, small content. And it's going to go down to more like medium content, medium content. But it's going to be quite, um, instead of having like a really big spike that you can burn and just go like, yeah, let's grind, let's blast. It's going to be more like, okay, boom, log in, blast, boom, log in, blast, right? It's going to be more of a straight line rather than like a, a mountain, like a spiky mountain, I think. And, and I think that will take a lot of getting used to because there will be, I think, this absence of like, oh yeah, it's Guild Wars 2, there's an expansion, it's an MMO, I'm sitting down and grinding for a couple of days, which I think is what a lot of players are looking for. And I think that thing is going to be absent. And I, I think that... I'm not totally sure if ArenaNet view this as desirable. I would be really curious if they would have preferred to drop Legendary Armor on release. Because I feel like if Legendary Arm was, and, and actually, I, I let me know if you think I'm crazy here. I feel like if they drop Legendary Armor on release, we almost wouldn't be having this conversation about like, what am I doing? What's going to be the thing to do? Um, or if maybe like the really big rifts had dropped on release. There need to be like that, that one thing that's like, oh yeah, this is the expansion content. Let's go. Whereas right now, I feel like Secrets of the Obscure is kind of lacking that a little bit. Like, what is that big no thing? Yeah, what is that big thing that I'm logging in for? Day two, we're going to sit down. We're going to grind. We're going to pump, right? We're going to get some progress done in the game. We're going to chase after something. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you, yeah, do you, do you no, find I, that lacking? I, I I think you've just exposed a big gap. The, the reality mm. is we don't know if there's anything to chase that you can get day one. We know that there's a mm. chase, but you can't actually obtain it mm. until much later. Because of this, you have to wonder. Uh, it, it depends what kind of player you are and what you're motivated by. But for me, I like, I like making it so that I have all the legendary stuff. You know, that I, I like getting it so that my character is really, really powerful. 
I guess the chase are the relics, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But but we don't really know exactly how that's going to function. Are you going to be able to get all relics in six hours? Because if that's well, yeah, the we case, don't know. There, there isn't really a long-term goal. Mm. And because we don't know, we're left to wonder, okay, what am I doing day two? <laughs> because if, if, if there's no chase, then what are you going to be doing? And it doesn't seem like there, there should be anything maybe, well, I guess you can mega grind a bunch of the normal mode rifts and, and whatever, but we just don't really know what any of those reward systems look like. I think it's challenging for ArenaNet to reveal much of those without screwing the economy over. Because if you, if you told people like what it was going to take to get certain things, the economy would just go crazy even right now. So I guess in short, I just feel a little bit lost, right? What, what, am I go what is my goal with the expansion? Uh, especially as a veteran player, I think that the goal is very obvious for players who have always wanted legendary armor but have never been into PvP world versus world and raids. The obvious transition to that is, okay, well, I'm just going to go for open world legendary armor, and day one, it's probably going to tell me some hints of what to go for. But as a veteran who's like, okay, well, I already have all the legendary armor, I guess relics are the only natural thing. Relics are the only thing that I can think of to have a goal about, but I don't know enough about them. So mm. I think that's a tricky place to be in when you have an expansion looming in three weeks. Legendary Relic would be cool, but now we know that's not coming until later as well. It was almost maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think it's maybe a little harsh to kind of assume a bit of an oversight from ArenaNet, but it does almost feel that way. Like it was like, they didn't give any information about legendary relics until they were kind of poked on it. It was like a really big question in the community that then they responded to and said, oh yeah, we're going to be adding this legendary relic that will link into your legendary runes. That would have been super cool to have on launch um, as well, I think. But yeah, that's no longer, well, that's obviously not the case now because that's going to be coming at a later release and that's going to be quite a while as well, right? It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be in 2024, which is a little bit unfortunate, I suppose, you know, one of the uh, quarterly releases there. But I uh, know. I hate to say it, but <laughs> this is going to sound like a really big meme, but I think we're almost going to have to wait until the next expansion to get like a full cycle in to see how all of this really feels, right? Because then like the gap between big chases is going to be separate. But I, I do still think that um, one thing that ArenaNet should certainly be considering when they continue this model is... I think psychologically and also just from a player perspective, it's really cool to have something big to be chasing after day one. When you, you've made this purchase, right? You said, right, ArenaNet, take my dollars and give me the game, right? And then you log in and you go, oh, I play through the story and then I go back to the cold t content I've been grinding for years, right? Because this is something that I'm really concerned about uh, potentially with... Um, the Guild Wars 2 expansion model, it happened with Path of Fire, in my opinion, is that you play through it and you go, oh, okay, I'm going back to Heart of Thorns. Like, this very much happened with me. You know, I remember like, yeah, let's go, Path of Fire, I'm, I'm, you know, snap, I'm ready to rumble. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to blast. And then I played through all of it. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I'm going back. I'm playing the new Elite Specs, but I'm playing it in old content. And don't get me wrong, that's a really core part of the Guild Wars 2 experience that will happen with any expansion that you'll, you know, you go back and you play stuff because it, you know, it's, it's horizontal, so it stays relevant. But it's a bit weird, right? It's a bit weird to have that experience where, oh, new expansion, what am I playing? Heart of Thorns, End of Dragons, right? Like that, that's, that's something not quite right there, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just, I was just thinking I could put on a million boosters, food, yeah. utility, have all these EXP boosters, go into the, there's two maps releasing, I think, and then there's going to be a third later. Yeah. I go into those two maps, grind out all the masteries really fast because a map will take you, I guess it depends on how big the map is, but a typical map will take you maybe an hour or two to full, fully explore. Mm. Depends on the verticality and if there are any puzzles or places locked behind metas but so you could do that you'll get a lot of the mastery points you'll upgrade the full what, what is it even called the weapon master line or whatever mm -hmm. and now you're you're kind of done right that, that i mean this is this is tricky because there's a lot of assumptions made by us on how difficult some of these things will be to obtain but if we're looking only historically 
I don't think that they're going to make it very difficult to get some of these masteries or to get the metas done. And if, if there isn't a lot of difficulty, and I'm not saying it has to necessarily be uber difficult or anything, but it's just going to mean people blaze through the content. They're, they're just going to rip through it wicked fast and then be left at the end going, okay, well, now what? And if there aren't those chase items, if there isn't a reason to continually farm, if there isn't some way that you go about making this content really fresh and exciting every day, then where where do you go? What What's the point? Mm. Yeah, I and mean, we, we, there are a few things that we do know about. They've already revealed that you will require rifts to get legendary armor. So there will definitely be a big motivation to grind rifts out um, so that you can essentially have all of the currents that you need. And similarly, we know that you're going to need to basically complete a bunch of armor collection achievements. Um, but it's almost like... It's very weird to me that the grind for the expansion will be like a pre-grind for something that doesn't even exist yet. You, you know what I mean? It, it's like, that yeah. is weird. It, especially when um, some of the actual farming systems will also be incomplete. I was very surprised to hear about the fact that, oh yeah, the rifts that we're adding into the game, they only go to champion level. Um, and like a lot of it is almost like designed to scale down to even being soloable. And I definitely find myself concerned about meta events. I would really love to actually, because I know they're probably a bit, maybe maybe they're a little bit more detached from the story this time around, but I would really like to have some insight into the meta events. Are we going to be seeing some more larger scale, pretty big group oriented stuff? You know, kind of more like, you know, your Heart of Thorns meta events, your Dragon's End style meta event, where this is going to be something meaty that you can sink your teeth into, or is it going to be a little bit less like that? You know, because if, there are, if the maps are really good, I think this is a very key part of Guild Wars 2. If the maps are a spectacle, if they're a big group experience that, you know, is, is actually going to be pretty fun. It's not, not necessarily they have to be hard, but I think it's really cool if they require some engagement from the group to get through them, right? Because even though stuff like Heart of Thorns maps, they're not hard, right? They have this you know, they have an element of strategy to them, right? You have to understand how they work um, in order to get through them, which I think is actually really fun, especially when you don't know how it works, when you have to learn it on launch and all that kind of stuff. But if those maps aren't a spectacle, if they aren't big and exciting, if they are a little bit more like Gaiala Delves, for example, which is, of course, a very extreme example, but you know what I mean, then I, I think that's really scary. Uh, so I'd love to hear some clarification from ManineNet on that map, because again, open world is a huge part of the focus um, for Guild Wars 2, and I don't think we really know what that's going to look like in Secrets of the Obscure, what no, the no, open no. world plans are. Like That's that's a big question mark for me. Um, I don't think we you know. know a lot about anything, really. Okay, this it sounds weird. We we know we know we know a few particular things but we haven't seen it right we've been told a lot so when i say we don't know I, I mean i haven't seen anything so i'm not positive i'm running completely on faith here that what they say is going to happen is absolutely going to happen mm -hmm. and the problem with that is that the things that we've seen have been in contrast to what they've said so far oh really or they haven't really lived up to what they've said Oh, you, you mean the way that it's been presented? Is that is yeah. that what you mean? Get yes. <laughs> Are you talking so about for the, example, rift, the, the Rift trailer? <laughs> the Rift trailer. The Rift trailer is very odd. Oh, no. It's very odd. I wish we could like live watch this again because my commentary on it, I, I, I remember people were all pinging me and like, oh, watch this trailer. What do you think? And so I mm. load it up. I sit back in my chair and I, I start watching it. And it's like 58 seconds long or something. Mm -hmm. Somebody's on a sky scale. They follow some blue aura. They go up. They make the rift appear. They kill level one frog. <laughs> <laughs> level one frog dies instantly to auto attacks. They put their hand up and get some magical essence or something. And that was it. And I went, huh? When I envisioned rifts, I was thinking like, Big creature comes out, difficult to fight, could actually kill you, right? Now, I'm, again, I'm a different kind of player. I'm thinking, of, like, the top-end difficult content. So when they're showing the level one frog content, I look at it and go, well, what's the point, right? They haven't really shown me anything. They didn't, they didn't excite me any, in any way. I'm, I'm curious what the, the reason behind that promotion was. What were they aiming for? What did they want to show the player base? Because that wasn't, th that was, 
maybe the best way to explain this is that was my given. That's what I just thought the obvious mm. thing would be. I just thought, oh, yeah, obviously the the easiest rift is going to be like a regular creature that you just slash two times with a great sword and it dies. Mm. They show didn't me the need spectacle, to show right? Like, you, you show me the spectacle. Yeah. They, they didn't need to show it to me because I already th knew that that's what the lowest level would be like. Mm. I want to know what the slightly harder stuff is going to be like. I want to know how you engage with them a little bit more. I, I need to know that stuff because right now, and All I have to go off of is what hmm. they've told me and what I've seen. And what I've seen is not what I'm hoping for. Hmm. And that's that's not good because I I don't care about the level one stuff that much. I can go grind that. And sure, I could maybe earn legendary armor, but I really want to know what's what's gonna what's gonna make the gameplay really exciting and fun. That that to me didn't show any exciting gameplay. If I wanted to do a scavenger hunt, I could do any of the other million achievements in the game. If I wanted to do fly my sky scale, there's a lot of places I could fly my sky scale. But what what is the rift content? What is it going to look like? What is the higher end rift content? But the problem is that the higher end rift content isn't even going to come out on release. So they can't really show that. They can only show the most basic level of rifts. So this, yeah. this all kind of gets intertwined because now... What I'm thinking is that on release, rifts are going to be so easy and so just boring that there's not really any reason for them to show us a spectacle because the spectacle is later. And that, to me, is alarming. I'm not saying this to be Omega Doom or anything. I'm pointing out that I think that rifts have a lot of potential and can be really, really good. But based on what they've shown me, I don't think the really good part is coming at release. And Which I think is weird. that is problematic. And yeah, I, that, that is problematic. And I, I kind of want to talk about that uh, uh, from a higher level perspective. I almost feel like they are setting rifts up for failure in this regard. Because first impressions matter. And if they bring in this oh, yeah. new feature, right? Like, oh, look, rifts. This is, this is, you know, it, is going to be a mastery. It's going to be one of the key expansion mechanics, right? And if they release and they suck and they're not interesting, I feel like that makes it super hard to kind of redeem them later on by um, iterating on them. Like if they, if they, if it doesn't deliver like a really cool experience on launch, then people are going to be primed to not be interested in it later on. So oh. I, I think that everyone have to be super careful with this type of approach. I'm having a like, vision, Teapot. Oh, really? What's the vi- oh. I'm having a vision. Oh. The vision is bounties <laughs> yeah oh no 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 you don't I, want to I'm talk so about that i'm so worried yeah <laughs> i'm i'm so worried that riffs when they release are just going to be exactly the same as bounties and what distinguishes riffs from bounties is going to be released later mm. that would be catastrophic oh. because riffs have so much potential to me it, it's like it, just like bounties did but, but yeah and we won't go into that but the point is riffs riffs could be very different from bounties if they want them to be. But if they don't release the part that's different on launch, then people will immediately think that they're no good. Those, like you said, those first impressions matter so much. I want this to be really successful. I think Rifts can be really exciting. It can be really solid, repeatable content. Mm. And basically they have different difficulty levels. And we are always talking about how we need better difficulty scaling and difficulty levels in Guild Wars 2. So here we go. Like this is the perfect opportunity to appeal to a wide array of players. But if you if you come out from the gate and you're you're slow as a snail, I I don't know how they're gonna get a, a really positive reception out of that. So in short, I have a lot of faith, but maybe some people won't. And we can't just be riding off faith this whole time. We we need to see something and. Mm. Ah, it's the, everything's pointing to that. The the good, the parts. I shouldn't say the good parts. The parts that appeal to me most are actually coming three to six months after the expansion releases. And at that point, it's left me to question: Well, why didn't they just like release it three to six months later? Because then they could have just released a lot of the stuff kind of around the same time. No. Hmm. Yeah. It, it's. <sighs> it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. And I, I have to say, um, I really hope that this ages badly. But by the way, if if what we're saying here ages badly, that will actually make me more annoyed. Because 
I, what I feel like with, with happens sometimes with Arena Net, uh, I think this happened with Ender Dragons, right? Is that they showed the maps. They tried to show off the maps, right, before um, the launch of the expansion. But because ever, they were like, oh no, we don't want to spoil anything. It was, they were literally like, I, and I, I, do you remember this, Sneb? When they actually said, no joke, without a shred or tinge of irony, they said, look at the texture work on this rock. That actually happened, guys, in uh, an ANET preview stream. Look at the texture work on this rock. <laughs> ANET actually has... I have never seen a company do this as well. They anti-hype their own content to an insane degree. Like, I am actually not writing off, by the way, Sneb, that r rifts are actually really cool. I just think Aina might have presented them in literally the worst possible way. Like, I, I don't... Yeah. I, at this point, with the ReadNet, guys, we can't write off that possibility that the system is actually really cool and the expansion's gonna be fire, but Aina anti-hyped it by by doing this type of promotion like it, it's <laughs> it, i mean I, think about wing five I don't right know. like uh, uh, actually no snap think about it with wing five like the uh, all the wing seven dude the wing seven trailer was terrible the wing five do you not remember that snap blurry screenshot for wing five <laughs> The, the promotional material for Raid Wing 5, which is, to be frank, one of the most epic cinematic Raid Wings in Guild Wars 2, was a blurry screenshot. <laughs> what? I, I do not Wait, do you not this, remember? So. Someone, I'm going to show it on stream. Someone oh. get it for me. Look, someone will have it right now. Get me the screenshot, chat. Do it now. I know one of you has it. Um, bring it here now. <laughs> <laughs> because I think Sneb needs... Sneb needs to see I'm this. worried <laughs> he, I, can't, I can't believe you don't remember this actually no remember i yeah. i didn't care about raids at all actually i think that's probably a good <laughs> a good way to describe a lot of the because i didn't care about raids in the slightest because i didn't do them so if they released a trailer i had no idea because i didn't pay attention and i'm sure many people probably feel the same mm. it actually leaves me to question do people not care about riffs i wonder if they really don't do you think do you think the only people that really 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 care about rifts are the ones that are like more end game type players because they see these as something that could be potentially difficult open world content or do you think people generally do care about rifts because they're attached to the big chase item which will eventually be legendary armor in open world i think people are forced to care about them in some way i think people could care about rifts uh, i think they're an interesting idea for sure. Um, I I'm just very concerned about their implementation. Like, when they were describing rifts, I was kind of envisioning, you know, on um, uh, on Jahai Bluffs, when, like, the entire map changes, like, it starts snowing, right? There's, like, textures everywhere. There's, yeah. like, new enemies. Oh, oh, yeah, it's going to be this with these, like, horrific demons breaking into the world. But it looks like it's going to be a portal that spawns mobs. Yeah. I th What I envisioned the rifts to be, be, like, you would go and you'd open the rift and it would like just kind of like destroy the area. Yeah, right? exactly. It would rip, yeah. rip the area yes. apart. And then depending on the level of the rift, it would be like really bad or it would be like kind of meh, you know, but I don't really, I don't There's really also... know. I'm actually getting, uh, wait, wait, wait. As we've been talking, I am getting a little bit worried because no, it really no, only gamers. dawned on me wanna... while we were talking. Yeah. What dawned on you? Right. Well, oh, oh. The, the idea that they can't show the big rifts because the big rifts aren't coming at launch. That, that's actually so problematic to me mm. because this means that any kind of hype that they try to generate has to, it has to be the lowest level of content that they're, that they're showing because that's, that's the only thing that's coming because they can't like false advertise that mm. on the first day there's going to be the stuff. right? They don't want to yeah. show that yet. They're going to show that later when it's about to come out. So they're always going to show us like the the lowest rung on the ladder. For sure. And I just want to kind of cut in here a little bit to to clarify. Yeah. I am not expecting rifts to be difficult. I'm not even saying they should be. What I'm expecting and this is what I expect from Guild Wars 2, especially in open world is spectacle. When I think of the strengths of this game, it is massive group play that looks really cool. Doesn't have to be difficult. Uh, you know, look, 
I've made my peace with that. So I am in. I'm in the syrup phase, Sneb, and you. I think you know. You're that. In the syrup phase. Oh yeah, I'm in the syrup phase. I. I am expecting big, bold, bombastic, crazy ass content coming out of Guild Wars Two. Um. And I'm actually really concerned that Soto may not be able to deliver on that. That's why I really want to see stuff about the meta events here. Also, this is a bit of a, a derail here, actually. Um, and I don't want to sound like too much of a doomer here. But I actually am a little disappointed in how the cryptists look. You know, do you see the concept art? They were just these evil, this disgusting, horrific entities. And in-game, it doesn't look right to me. It does not look right to me what do you mean by that well because they kind of have these they have this like weird void outline they they don't look like as crisp or as clean or as weird and otherworldly as i feel like they should they just have this kind of like black glow around them and you don't really they don't look fleshy Right, you know they, they, you know they were even described this way in the blog post in a story. They're like they're like meaty and fleshy and like ugh. I don't think, you think they... it's possible that those aren't the final product. No, what we've seen it, is it's, really just a placeholder. It, it's, it, it's in th it's in three weeks now. Why would they show a placeholder like three weeks away from the expansion? That makes zero sense. Because they don't want to spoil us. Because there's only two maps, and so if they show off too much stuff, they've basically shown the entire expansion. I mean, think, think of it like this. In the past, their expansions have been two-hour films. And then now they're doing an hour film. So if they show a trailer that's like five minutes, it's way more. It's, it's a way larger percentage of the actual content. If they show too much of anything, it spoils like the whole expansion. No? Well, that's, that's why they're not going to show us the meta events. There's no way they show us the meta events. They might well, be able to tease one, maybe, but if they show both, then they've just shown the entire expansion. Well, here's the thing. If they cannot promote their expansion without spoiling it, then that is a problem that they should fix. <laughs> it, look, listen, okay, Steve, you're a marketing guy, big yeah. brain, teaches uh, you know, the next generation at university, PhD snub, okay, incoming. Um, tell me this from a marketing perspective: if you, if the only marketing you can do for your product anti hypes people and just makes people think that the that your product is a complete failure, then I would would you classify that as a problem? <laughs> I would probably classify that as a problem. Yeah. I suppose. I mean, when you and I are looking at something, we think it's not that hype. I'm curious what people who are not players like us think. One of the problems that we have in the community is people are often extremely critical of the marketing. And I think there's a lot of fair reasons for that. But I do think that sometimes we push it a little bit too far because we either A, don't understand the initiative or B, we're not seeing marketing because it's not targeted to you. They're legitimately not trying to market to you. They're trying to market to someone else. Now, I'm not trying to justify or validate that the marketing is perfect or anything. I actually think there's a lot of different issues and not th nothing is perfect. But at the same time, uh, for, for example, like... Snap, I found are... this. We've got the screenshot. Oh, you got the screenshot? Okay, show me the screenshot. It's on stream. It's on stream now. This was the okay, marketing I'm, for Wing 5. I'm looking. No way. Yes. What Wait, do you mean, that's no it? Yes. This was the... Uh, really? This is, yes. This was the screenshot for Wing 5. I like how Demeth is in there and says... What, what happened, the with, the happened with the textures, <laughs> by the way? <laughs> Yeah, I believe this is maybe not on the highest settings, which, you know, is fair enough. The game is hard to run. So, although I guess it's a screenshot, huh. so it doesn't matter, but still. Hmm. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't really have an explanation for that. I think that's a little odd. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't work in the video game industry, so that it's not really fair for me to critique too much. I don't understand how it all works, but it does seem a little bit strange to me I wonder how much their budget has changed for marketing because at least with EOD, they did have these trailers. Now, some of the trailers were a little bit odd because 
it's almost like they kind of assumed that you knew a lot and usually you want trailers to not make such large sweeping assumptions <laughs> uh but the the trailers at least thematically were well done like they also looked pretty good mm. but i don't think we've got anything well, like that really this is we? the thing i i find myself really bothered by this because the initial teaser trailer for um secrets of the score was great in my opinion it was showing that you know everyone was on fire there was a there was this shot of this almost like demon character like a demos with wings or something like that like with yeah. like some demonic laughter let's go let's bring some fucking energy and then they're they're i think they did a great job selling the theme of the expansion but when it's come to the actual gameplay like the, the bread and butter the meat and potatoes i think they've completely failed to present it well to the players like they've completely failed there um to present it to their audience and you, you know yeah. what so you were talking about how um we need to be careful about uh, like our you know is it just us that's worried about this our demographic of players i don't think so if you look at the response uh, the responses on twitter um to the rift thread it ain't looking good right people I'm gonna are go look. people are not happy with it people are not feeling hyped about it if you look um on social media and so on people are not feeling excited about this and you know i think that really sucks because i, I do you know Call me a copium addict, but I am expecting the expansion to actually deliver something that's going to be fun to play. Uh, I I think it is actually being presented worse than it actually is. Seriously, I'm not even joking. But right now, I feel like the hype is somehow completely dumpstered. I feel like Anet started out really strong with their cool, you know, cinematic teaser uh, thing, and they just completely like drove the hype train into the ground. Like, <laughs> I don't know where did that's... you say this is? What are, is it the trailer? Yeah, yeah, the rift thing. The the rift thing on on Twitter. If you look at the hype, the responses, it's they're not positive. Okay, let's uh let's put it like that. Everyone was excited at the initial trailer, right? Because everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, Wizard's Tower, Wizard's Tower." It I, is cool. On, yes. I'm trying to find this. Look, I'll hang on. I think um I'll hang on. Let me link it to you. Actually, I think I've I'm close. It. I just uh... I've linked it to you. There you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm I'm bad. I could not find it fast enough. Oh yeah, I skipped over it <laughs> by accident. Only a hundred retweets. Wow. Oh yeah. Okay. So here, here are a couple of the comments. First one that popped up for me was, I wish they would come out with some genuinely new creature designs instead of merely reskinning old ones. This is becoming more and more obvious since End of Dragons, and it leaves a bad taste. Mm. I was really hoping it would warp reality around it, like the rifts in Jahai Bluffs. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. Why is this video not on YouTube? That's a good question. <laughs> Could you please occasionally upload these somewhere else rather than Twitter? The bitrate murders the video. <laughs> Do we get a dev stream showing off the weapons and allowing community mm. comment on them before they're released? I just want to avoid them sucking and people finding out on launch when we could already be having the chat about how community thinks the weapons will do. Mm. This is very interesting. And there's just no response to these things, right? Do, do you want to talk about something real quick, actually? To, to um, maybe divert away from just talking about how scuffed the presentation of the game is sometimes. I actually want to say something that is good i do yes. not think it is super fair to criticize um arena net for like reusing assets i in fact i think it's the opposite i think anet being more willing to reuse stuff is actually a very good thing because it means that it will help with the glacial content release schedule that the game has had historically um I do think Anet dug themselves into this hole because they have historically refused to do this. They, like, only make fresh stuff every single time. But that is exactly why we found ourselves in the content drought zone a hell of a lot. Don't get me wrong. They should still make some new stuff. And, yeah, they probably should have showed showcased some, like, new models and new animations and stuff like that. Um in the expansion rather than something that was reused for sure that was a, definitely a poor choice on their part i mean that's assuming they I'm, I'm at, there's no way they haven't made anything new by the way if they haven't if they haven't done any new animations then you know that's not gonna go over super well and i think that's uh, understandable but i do think that asset reuse is not only extreme and co common practice with other mmos i think it's also a very good practice as well as it allows the developers to deliver far more content 
um, to the player than they would otherwise be able to be. And, and I really think you cannot overstate how important fresh content and fresh experiences are to the player base new animations and new models i think they're awesome and i do think they're essential right i'm gonna hit this very hard so people can't like eviscerate me for saying that you know oh the devs should never make anything new no they should however asset reuse Model reuse, animation reuse, these are really important tools in the MMO developer's arsenal, in my opinion, um, because it just simply allows them to make more stuff and deliver us the experiences we're looking for. He, Snap, look, I Snap is actually, he's scared. He doesn't even want to get in on this discourse. He's too scared. I don't, I, don't, I don't personally have a problem with people reusing assets. I think it's the intelligent thing to do. In fact, mm. I would like it if they would go and reuse more assets to create more strike missions, but that's another thing. Think about how many insanely cool bosses there are in the game that are just stuck in the story only to be hit with a stick and die instantly and not pose any kind of challenge or threat. I think it'd be really cool to have more of those assets used in strike missions, but the problem is that they can't go back now because it would cost way too much money to try to revive a lot of those things. Mm. But now we can actually have it so that you know that stuff does happen, and it has happened at least to some extent. So we'll see. I'm fine with the reuse of assets. I do like new assets, though, too. So I, I am with the people that want some new stuff, but I also, I don't, I don't get super upset about it because I'm, I'm okay with some reuse as long as we get more content. Yeah, I'm a content enjoyer. I am a big content enjoyer. Ice Brood Saga starts copied as they were terrible. Um, n no, they, they weren't actually. Um, like, I, I think a lot of people go, oh, the strikes were awful because they were easy. But I think it's actually really important to separate those two things. Something being easy doesn't mean it's bad. Like, I think a lot of open world content is obviously extremely easy, but that doesn't mean it's bad. That's I think fun. it can still be really enjoyable. It can still be fun to play. I think the Relaxing. Ice Fruit Saga strikes are, are actually, like, not only pretty popular, I think they also are pretty good. And yeah, like, uh, I like that they are um, reused from the story. I think the only reason those even existed is because they were. Um, so I think that's actually really not the case. Like, obviously, it would have been nice to have the difficulty options for players who are looking for a challenge, but that's very much the icing on the cake, I think. Um, I, I, I think at, at some point, you do have to kind of make your peace with the fact that realistically, almost no content in Guild Wars 2 is going to be challenging. Um, you do have to... You have to make your peace with that, guys. I'm afraid, uh, as much as I hate to say it. <laughs> I, I'm kind of ready to divert to another topic. Oh, oh, let's do it. What do you want to talk about? Oh no, I'm I'm ready. He's laughing. You had to unleash. I, you had to unchain. I am. I think this is really interesting. Lately, I've noticed on the subreddit goes through these phases where it talks about certain oh, things. No. Oh no. Oh no. Like an extended period of time. I think I know where this is going. Do you? I've noticed lately that there's a lot of people posting logs, like just like a, well, not even logs, a screenshot of like the DPS meter or the oh, break bar. Oh. And then they just go like, this is why it's hard. <laughs> and I, I just think it's fascinating because for so long, people like you and I would just be like, we're telling you it's not that hard, but you need everyone to participate. You need everyone to use a build. You need everyone to throw on some gear that makes sense. And if you just do that, then you'll hit that bare minimum. I've even done the math, right? You need you need like 4K DPS on average mm. at Dragon's End to kill the thing. If everyone is doing about 4K DPS, you can do it. Heck, we did it with all healers, with all healer gear. And we were successful because we did the mechanics and everything. So anyway, you look at all of this and I just can't help but think, yeah, <laughs> Yes, they're right. Like there is there is a bit of an issue here. And yet nothing is ever done to address the fact that players are left in the dark. I I I I just don't I feel like a broken record. I talk about this every time I'm on here. I just I am so passionate about this cuz I think it sucks to be the player that goes in and just can't figure out why you're failing. You just can't figure it out. 
So you start going and you go down all these rabbit holes and then you find arc DPS and then you're trying to figure out how to le learn how to use that. And there's just no, there's just nothing giving you feedback. You have to learn how to read arc DPS and go through all that. It's, it's not that those things are terribly difficult to do, but it's just this extra step where players are left totally confused. And you look at, you look at these measurements, people are posting them to Reddit. And I would guess that more than half of players easily have no idea what those numbers even represent or mean. When you see this blue bar show up on the screen, do you even know what a break bar is? Do you even know to call it that? Do you know to call it a defiance bar? How do you know? How do you know for sure what skills to use? I guess you hover over them and now they have that thing that highlights that tells you if it's going to do defiance. But I think this trend is quite interesting because it's showing this massive gap where players are super lost on the systems of the game. And I think we are at a point where you either give up on teaching them the systems and have the systems essentially cater or the, the gameplay cater to people that don't understand the systems, or you do something to help people understand the system so that they can feel empowered to do well. And I, I frankly like the latter. I think it's important that people feel empowered to learn and that they go through this journey where they can actually understand what's going on around them and feel like they're and feel like they're progressing in some way. We're in a horizontal progression game where people can't even measure their own horizontal progression. Think about that. Is, isn't that a little strange that people have no idea how to measure their own skill performance in the game? Mm. And that's 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 the whole allure of horizontal progression. That and I guess you don't have to buy new gear, but your progression only stops with you. But if you have no idea how to measure that, then it stops immediately. <laughs> it's a non-starter. It doesn't start. Yeah, I, I think just a lot of um a lot of players aren't really interested in engaging with the systems. I think that if if you want to, you will. If you don't want you to, you won't. I think any player who wants to learn will. And players who don't don't. And I think both of those options are actually completely fine. Uh, I am oh, actually yeah, totally I'm I am the opposite direction with you. I think you just say, you know what? This content is pretty chill. You know, you can just you don't really have to understand the game. You can if you want, and it will really help you out. Um but if you don't want to, then you don't have to. I think that, I think that's fine. You know, I it just well, you just relax, you just blast, press some buttons, do three K DPS, easy peasy. Well, you say that, but the problem is that that's not really how they tried to do things recently in the in the past. You mean dragons? They, they end? threw the no, no, no. They, <laughs> yeah, they threw dragons end end in there, and then they also threw the turtle into a strike mission. Yeah, not anymore. And now they've they've, not, si not they've anymore. since they didn't. gone and reverted <laughs> yeah. all of that. Is that not super interesting to you? Well, they they've, tried. They've it didn't work. <laughs> everything, but but it's because they it's because they never actually showed people how to do it right they're just like all right clearly people will be fine with this let's just chuck a bunch of stuff that's way harder than what people are used to because they don't put on their necklace or anything <laughs> they don't have the stats so of course they're going to really really struggle with that i i'm just a big advocate for the player i think that anybody can do this of course if yeah. i can do it Anyone can do it. I'm not special in any way. I'm not even that good at the game, but I have done some of the hardest stuff in the game because of sheer will and asking a lot of questions. <laughs> and I don't think you should have to go to the entire player base and like beg for information and beg for guides because, because you can't tell what's going on in the game. Yeah, I think they've made a lot of strides this way, especially with regards to visual clutter uh, and those sorts of things. You know, they added added a few places where they taught you about defiance bars and such. But man, I just I feel so passionate about this because I really think there's a huge opportunity for players to do a lot of the stuff that isn't even close to as hard as they perceive. It I mean, to yeah, be. I think they it, should. You know, I think improving total tools perception. will be good. But I, I think the, the wall that you're going to run into here is that um, you can't measure your performance very well in this game. Uh, like, that's the issue uh, that you're always going to bonk into. Um, and I think that's actually a wall that ArenaNet will never go past. Um, and I think that's why with Guild Wars 2, you're always going to have to kind of just say it doesn't matter um, if you understand the game or not. Because I, 
I do not think the Guild Wars 2 player base wants performance metrics to be included in the game. So what this means to me, and, and I'm not mad about this per se, I, I, just, I just think that this is a big fork in the road for the game. If legitimately there's no desire to mm -hmm. help players sort of learn these systems, then you cannot ever make any content that engages with the systems in any meaningful way. Pretty much, without... yeah. in, in open world, yeah. anyway. In open world. Um, you can an in instance. Yeah, content, you can but make you can make the instance content, but even then, it's just such a low ROI for them because they're never yeah. they're never filling the top of the funnel because these players, uh, well, I shouldn't say that there will still be players that they figure it out themselves, but it's just so fewer. It turns out that the more you enable people to do something and the more resources there are, the more accessible it is, the more likely people are to engage with the system, and so if you don't help guide people toward the top of that funnel then they don't go in and they get yeah. lost yeah but the the problem is is that that funnel requires performance you, you know if you, i mean look look let's think about this right um you're getting into fitness right now snub um and what is the, one of the most important things about your progression in fitness and, and you've even kind of the talked about where to the gym yeah, very funny, right? Very, very, yeah. And honestly, that's important in Guild Wars 2 as well, to be fair. Like, the fashion wars, right? But a big part of it is that you're going, oh, yeah, I, every time I go to the gym, I'm going, oh, I can lift a little bit heavier. Oh, I can run a little bit further, a little bit faster, right? Like, you have the ability to measure your performance. You know how well you're doing. Like, imagine if, when you went to the gym, all of the weights were, looked identical, uh, and weighed a random amount that would be super fucking weird right and you would probably have a really hard time understanding am i getting stronger am i feeling really bad today why can't i lift this it's the exact same you know it's the same bar the weights look identical how do you do it how do you know how are you doing right do you know what i mean like this yep. this is the issue if you don't have the ability to understand how well you're doing um then it's impossible to progress, right? For I think you see this in open world events, right? Especially with how um, varied open world squad performance can be. Like, uh, I mean, would you think this is possible, by the way, Snub? I reckon this happens a lot, where a new player might join an open world event, and one time, it will the event will be beaten in two minutes, right? Like you're not, you know, like Octavine dies in two minutes. Another time they might join, and it would take ten minutes. And they all go, what the hell happened? Why is this so different, right? Like, why did it take two minutes then and 10 minutes now? Uh, and I think you see this, especially with the more, uh, the harder open world events. So if you look at something like Dragon's End, for example, um, I think a lot of players go into that and they fail, right? The event fails because it, it still does fail relatively regularly. Um, and then they'll do another run and they'll go, this isn't even different. It feels the same but it dies instantly. It dies in like less than 10 minutes and you get like a sick run. Uh, and I would say this is maybe even like another slightly meta topic we could get into for a bit of a sideshow here on today's Tea Time outside of the expansion topics. I think this, especially in open world, is getting significantly more extreme because of the shift towards private communities. Um, oh, like yeah. a, a big thing here that I, I see, for example, Darren's runs a lot of the meta trains on NA for Hardstuck and he regularly gets comments saying stuff like, I didn't know it was even possible to kill this this quickly. Or I have never seen the break bar on this boss be broken that fast. And, and, and yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, what's, you're funny, yeah. what's funny about that is, mm. uh, and mm. I, I want to credit Darren's mm. and his groups are very strong, but they're just memeing and having a good time. If they actually took it seriously, they would kill it twice as fast, right? Like, mm. It's not like they're optimizing super hard. They're just having a good time. And I think that's beautiful. That's awesome. So the perception that, that they're they're like, oh, this is impossible. Like, how can they possibly do it? They're just having a good time. The, the difference is they just clicked a couple buttons and they put on gear that made sense. And then they grouped together and put in subgroups. Three things. And now suddenly they're nine times as fast as any public group ever. There's a lot of coordination. Obviously, you have to get a community to do that. I understand it's not as easy as just one, two, three, go. But realistically, if most people in the game were to engage with these processes a little bit different, these systems, then you would see 
way faster things. But the reality is a lot of players don't even attack the boss. Uh, and th that's not some sort of snide quip at people. It, it's actually true. I mean, when I look at those things on Reddit and it shows me the damage that people have done and somebody's doing less than 1K DPS, realistically, you either have no traits, no gear, or you're not attacking the boss, or maybe all three. Mm. But with most things you can do like three or four K DPS on a core warrior with some traits that kind of make sense on full exotic Selly armor with strength runes. If you auto attack only on a great sword, you can do about seven K DPS. Maybe, maybe it's six K. And then if you add food and utility and other buffs and whatever, you can get all the way up to like 10 K. I guess I should say, I think you do about four to five K if you have no boons, but if you have boons, you're suddenly doing like six, seven, eight K like that almost doubles your damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think this is why it's super difficult. Um, because I, I think that a, a lot of users are not interested in performance metrics being in any way kind of uh, facilitated or culturally accepted within the game. And you know what? I'm, I am actually at the point in my Guild Wars 2 career, Sneb, where I have actually become zen. You know what? That's fine. Oh yeah, there's there's no... I, I don't ever pass any kind of judgment on players for any of this. Yeah. Frankly, they play. They bought the game, they can play the game however they want. However, the part where, that I do take issue with is when players say, this is impossible, or I don't understand how this is ever going to be reality for me. I think a lot of players have this tendency to discount themselves and to tell themselves that they're not good enough, when in reality, they are. They have a lot more potential than they give themselves credit for. And there are a lot of options for accessibility, regardless of what barriers you might face. And so you can have a really big impact on the encounter that you're facing if you so choose to believe in yourself a little bit and maybe ask a few questions, ask for some help from other community members. and. Uh, just engage in these systems. Yeah. I, I take issue when people will give up without trying. Um, but I also don't entirely blame them because it is very opaque. People aren't, they're, they're just a little bit lost and confused. They look, they look at like my stream or your stream or anybody who's anybody who's been playing the game a long time. that's engaged in end game content and they go, what, how, like I, the other night I killed Sabatha without doing a single cannon. And I've done this on the first try like four different times now. And I just ran a few scourges and you just press F2 off cooldown and it converts uh, listen, burning into okay, ages. Okay, hang on, and let, let, me, done, right? let me get it. No in. one's gonna know um, how let, that's possible. Hit, you know, hit, snub, snub. I'll, look, if you want me to leap in front of the bullet, I'll do it. Yes, the Guild Wars 2's community's attitude regarding performance metrics is unbelievably self-destructive and unbelievably short-sighted, yes. Yes, it is. Bad. It is correct that you're you're absolutely right. Yes, is the is the Guild Wars Two's community dislike of any kind of performance metric in the game or like um to be accepted within the game? Does that actively gatekeep people from getting out of the game and prevent them from learning? Yes, that is the yes, that's correct. It's very yeah. frustrating. Yeah. It's, it's it's not something I can fully understand either because I like the data. I like to know. If I was walking around with a massive hole in my pants, I would want someone to tell me, <laughs> right? I would, if you, I'd be like, wait, please are you, are you tell me. Steph, if you look like <laughs> a, if if you look like an emaciated <laughs> ghoul on stream because of the lighting, you'd want someone to tell you. I would, I would yeah. expect my friend <laughs> to tell me that I looked like an emaciated ghoul, so that I didn't spend the next year and a half streaming like an emaciated ghoul. Yes. <laughs> I would I would be like, please tell me about the emaciation, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important that uh, if you have the data, then you can do something about it. If you don't have the data, then you either won't know and you won't do anything, or you might not even know where to start. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of want to talk about the... Um... I kind of want to talk about the private community thing, because I actually think this is highly tangential. I think... Um... 
because there's no wide acceptance of performance metrics in the game, um, this has basically caused the community to split itself uh, into private and public. Uh, and I, I actually think this is starting to be a bit of a problem. Now, maybe you don't think so. I, I think you, you do a well, little I, bit. I absolutely think um, so. Because yeah. I, I think we're starting to get into issues. Because a lot of the player base is very against, um, like, kind of growth, performance-oriented gameplay, what's happening is that all of the players who are, are more and more starting to coagulate in completely private groups. And I think this is actually starting to become an issue. I think this has always happened to an extent, obviously, like, you know, players who feel the same way will, will you know, will obviously play with the players you know, of that same mindset. But I think it's really starting to become a big problem now with instance content and even open world content, I think is actually getting to that point as well. Um, more and more, you're seeing private meta trains, private um, raid groups, private strike groups um, popping up more and more and more. And at this point... Well, define private. I, I think we should be very clear about what uh, private uh, okay. means. Out of game. Out of game organization. So this, third... doesn't, this doesn't mean that they're inaccessible in any way or that you're being gate kept mm. out of the group in any way. It just means that they're not advertised in the game, yeah, per yeah. se. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're not being advertised in game. They are being um, entirely advertised on third party. Um, and... I want to explain why. The reason people do this is because it allows them to essentially um, set standards, right? And set, like, the mentality. They want to play with people who share that same mentality uh, because it prevents toxic experiences. Like, the root of toxicity is always mismatched expectations, right? This is, I, I don't think, I don't think anyone would disagree with that, by the way. I think that is actually the coldest take in the universe if, if you're in a group and some people want to speed run and some people just want to clear then that's obviously a bad idea uh, and there's no real good way to do this in the game like partially because of the lack of performance metrics right like you can't um you can't set a performance standard and, and because you can't do that um people go to third party platforms and people now even do this in open world right because it turns out it's really really fun to just like blast open world with a guild group seriously like darren's does this so effectively with the hard suck meta train he sometimes has three squads and they're all entirely players who are of the same mindset and they just fucking melt everything and this is another really big problem here you get more gold by doing this like um the meta train that people do in hard suck it really generates you a huge amount of revenue a lot more than uh public groups do simply because of the speed at which you're able to complete the events and then complete other events um so the gap between experienced yeah, players is and broadening new players grows. it's it's getting yeah. bigger like the gap between um the new player experience and like a veteran experience someone who's a bit more engaged in the community is getting massive um and this is it also true with instance content, in my opinion, because less and less players are using the in-game LFG, less and less players are pugging, and more and more are uh, going to hearts, they're going to skein gang, right? They're going to training communities and going to raid communities, is that the new player experience is getting way worse in the LFG, and it's getting better and better off-platform. Now off-platform, man, it is so easy to get into raids. Like, you can be raiding in less than an hour. Uh, if, you know, um, if you... Uh, if you actually join, like, um, a Discord, if you join a community, you'll be in immediately, and it will be fucking great. People will teach you, you can learn in a comfortable, um, like, very relaxed environment, you can get your clears, you can get into a static group, you can get into public groups all the time, right? You can pump, but in-game, it is getting brutal, right? The LFG is quieter and quieter, the group quality is also going down as there are less experienced players um, joining the LFGs, especially for squad and there, content. the big thing that we always talk about is there's not knowledge transfer, yeah. so the gap broadens mm. again. Yeah, this is, a, I think that's actually almost more of a problem uh, in open world uh, than it is actually in Oh, absolutely content. it is. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, open world is super cool in this game. I'm a huge fan of it because it essentially allows like players to melt together, right? And then they can learn from each other uh, and that you can kind of see what people are doing and kind of get a, get a feel for how the game works and how the game plays out as a new player. That is becoming less and less possible as time goes on because um, all of the inexperienced players are ending up kind of playing with each other um, 
and then all of the experienced players are kind of isolated uh, and doing their own thing entirely. I'm not really sure this, what the solution is here, to be honest. Um, I'm just identifying the problem <laughs> because, yeah, I, I do think it is becoming a yeah. very serious issue in the game. Um, and I think it's only going to get more extreme if nothing changes. I'm not totally sure how to go about doing it. I think the last time we talked about something like this was well over six months ago, so I'll pitch my mm. ideas again. Um, but I want to start with a little bit of context into mm. my strategy as a, a community leader for SG, mm. or, or Skane Gang, the guild that I run in the community for Raid Statics. One of the things people always complain about in guilds is, oh, there's a click. There's like always, there's a click. We're not. And so what guilds do is they say, we don't have clicks, <laughs> right? They go, oh, no click here. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Every guild has clicks. Every guild has them. And so anytime a guild says, oh, we don't have clicks, Sneb, I'm like, bull, right? I know that there's a bunch of you that have been playing together for four years that you meet at 9 p.m. every night on Discord. You're a click. That's that's a click. Um, but there's I, I nothing know, wrong I, with that. I, I would actually agree with that. I would say there's an extra part to the definition of click, which is, and they don't interact with the larger group. That I think Maybe. is a really. I don't think that's how people perceive it. Uh, by they the way, click... there's this group that are all friends, and that they like, they just can't get into that. Click, friend group, click is an right? alternate uh, pronunciation of click. By the way, like you might, yeah. you, if you're European, you you probably pronounce it that way. But th this is like the. I guess like uh, the other pronunciation. <laughs> the butchered yeah. NA version? Yeah. I well, I, I, yeah, look, I we, we, but, we butcher the language equally, okay? Like Europeans, English people, we haven't got a leg to stand on, all right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just always yeah. say click. I think it, I, I've heard both though. Yeah, no, but anyway, both are valid, it, both are valid, but it, it's, it does, it's not correct either way. They're both valid. Yeah. Okay, like, <laughs> what, where I was going with this is that uh, rather than People always go in, they see that there's a friend group, and they might be p totally welcome into that friend group, but they see that there's already an established friend group, and they go, that's a click, I'm gone. I don't want to deal with that, right? They, they're they unwilling to engage with it. And so rather rather than fight against that and go, we don't have clicks, we don't have clicks, we do. Like, we, we have people that have been friends forever, and you're totally welcome into the group, but, you know, we just have all these inside jokes and crap that you probably don't know yet that we're happy to teach you about. So rather than lean away and say, oh, yeah, like it's not you would be immediately knowing all of these inside jokes. We just go, hey, we have lots of teams. And so all of these teams work together and that's kind of your click. But so your teams all have inside jokes and they work together and then they meet other teams and they, you know, they sort of network all and create this beautiful web of people, which is really cool. That's that's the community. So where I'm going with this is rather than rather than lean away and deny things, I think it's important to lean into them. For example, these Discord communities that exist, they could be a lot more public. They could be if there was a place to make them public. They could be a lot more accessible if the game actually said, hey, these communities exist, but they don't. And because people constantly bash people for putting things on the LFG, they don't. This is why no matter how hard people complain about me advertising the community and the LFG, I will keep doing it because I know that it's the right thing to do. Because otherwise, people have no idea how to get into this content, especially on NA. On NA, they look at the LFG and they see nothing. They see emptiness. And so... That's not right. If there are all of these private communities, these private communities doing them, why would why why do they have to be so private? They're not really private in the sense that no one's allowed in. They're just people just don't know about them because they're not well advertised. Why don't we have a system in the game that says, "Hey, these are Discord communities that run these events or guilds." In Guild Wars 1, they had a Guild of the Week thing or guild of the month i can't remember they had this system where they would interview guild leaders and talk about their guild and how you could join it and get into the content they were doing why are we not doing that why are we not celebrating community and leaning into it even harder because it's not a bad thing inherently that people want to work together to solve these events and make things more efficient what is a bad thing is that nobody knows about it and so how do you spread it further? Well, you integrate it into the game. You make it so there's a spot to advertise your community or whatever in the game that 
is is more intentional than the LFG because right now the LFG everyone has this, some different opinion about what can and can't be posted in there, and they need a spot that's dedicated to community, to guilds, to these big runs, so that people feel welcome into these discords, and or websites or for or whatever it is, whatever kind of thing your guild or community does. How did so that, that go over? Everyone can get in. How, how do you think people react? If they actually did that, do you think the, the overall sentiment would be positive or negative? I don't know why it would be negative. Why, why would it be negative that people are allowed now to invite people into their group, basically, and say, hey, we actually have this big community. We do these things. We've never had a place before that we could really share what we do, but now we do. And, and I would even go a step further and I would say it is the responsibility of a community manager to highlight these things and show how awesome they are to the community and be involved in them. I'm just not I sure if people would like really that. Important. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think it's almost like against the, to an extent, it's almost like against the spirit of Guild Wars 2 um, in a way. Well, you know or, what else is I, I think the spirit of Guild Wars 2? Having nothing in the LFG. <laughs> yeah, but we've already kind of gone over this, right? Like, um, we've already had conversations like this that go this way before, in my opinion. I think people would rather have nothing than have have any friction whatsoever um, in, in any universe. Uh, th that's my kind of read on things, um, is that people would prefer nothing over any friction in order to achieve a positive outcome overall. I, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with having a system where you can very publicly and easily advertise your community. I actually think you could make it a gold sink if you wanted to. I'd put some like light things that you could have an ad running for X amount of time or whatever, or, or you can just make it free and see what happens. I don't know. You could do that in Roblox. Um, this is actually really sick. I like this. This is in my. This is an interesting system. When I was playing Roblox a lot, you could um, you got tickets when people visited your game, and you could pay tickets to advertise your game. Um, so basically, you would you would earn tickets by advertising and then feed it back into the advert system. It was sick. That was really cool. Actually, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the one thing <laughs> that I've, I've had to learn in the past few months at least is you just have to not care about all the people that want to be miserable and unhappy. It, it, you can sit, people can sit there and criticize me as much as they want, uh, but frankly, they probably have no idea how much I care and how much work I put in. And the same goes for you, Teapot. People have no, no idea how much work you actually put in. They just see the small, the small glimpse and they make a bunch of assumptions. I just want people to be able to raid and have groups and have fun. That's it. I just do it because I care, because I like the game. I've played it forever. Uh, that's it. There's really nothing else there. And <laughs> if inviting people to do that publicly creates a problem for people, I, I just don't care. <laughs> I just want to be inclusive and invite everyone. And th there's only a couple ways to do that within my power. And so I'm going to do it. I think that they should lean in even harder. I think it should be official, that there should be like a, an official Discord by Guild Wars 2, like an official hub. That's one way to do it. Then you don't even have to lean on the individual communities. You just create a ran by ArenaNet Guild Wars 2 Discord. And, uh, and, and then people can go group up there or something. I don't know. I would do something like that. However, that's going to take a lot of time and effort by someone because you'd have to heavily moderate that. Uh, otherwise, I would just lean on the community. I would create a bunch of essentially arena net partners that are just these massive communities that do raids and strikes and open world meta events and bounty trains and you name it, right? The problem, though, is who gets picked? How do you pick them? Is, is there a criteria for who gets it and who doesn't get it? And I think that's something that the partner program has struggled with for a long time. And so, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Honestly, I'm. I I'm gonna uh, honestly, Snap, join me in the Zen phase. The Zen phase. I'm in the workout yeah. phase. Yeah, I'm there too, man. I I we're <laughs> blasting. It's half marathon time. Yeah. You know? it's time to time to juice up. You need up. to commit to the yeah. half marathon, Teapot. You got to commit. 
I invited Roy, by the way, but he hasn't replied. I think he's oh, traveling. Oh, that would be so good, actually. That would be so I invited good. Roy. I think everyone in the Guild Wars 2 does community... E everyone should, just, should come and run the half yeah. marathon with us, yeah. <laughs> everyone should run the half marathon. Everyone, we could do a Guild Wars 2 meetup, right? You know, you could... Yeah. You could. You know what you could do? You, you could run it what? wearing all the merch. <laughs> Just, you know, get the I headband on, right? Yeah. Get the shirts going. It'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should, seriously though, you need to commit, Teapot. Yeah. You've got to commit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm, I'm signing up. Uh, I, I looked at it last night. Yeah. Did you know you get a discount for signing up early? So I, I'm heavily motivated now to oh, also. Yeah. You want to get some savings and some good savings? Yeah. I got to get, get, save that $9 or whatever it is. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Hey, look, that's some gems you can get there. That's a swipe, yeah. right there. That's an easy <laughs> swipe. Convert that into gems, convert that into gold, pay for a run. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. It's all good. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm fully zen. Uh, I And I, I to kind of like take it back to Soto. Um, I actually, can't, I, it's not possible for me to, um, I know I'm going to enjoy the expansion snub. I actually know that with oh, 100%. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm quite excited for it. Like, uh, whatever happens to me is a gift. You know, like, it, whatever <laughs> content Arena releases, I'm like, you know what? Let's blast. Let's play. I have fully reached, I have utterly reached the acceptance phase when it comes to Guild Wars 2 in its utter entirety. What do you think about the acceptance phase? Do you view that as depressing or do you view it as a good thing? Uh... Maybe maybe a bit of both. I th I think mm. I think having realistic expectations about things is important. Yeah. But I also think having hope is also important. And so as long as as long as the acceptance phase doesn't devoid you of all hope, then I think you're fine. Mm. Well, to me, the acceptance phase is the game, in my opinion, is exactly what it is, uh, and I am not expecting it to change. Yeah. They're putting a lot of trees. What is it? What are you guys even spamming? This doesn't make any They've sense. They've been spamming nonstop for like 45 minutes. And they've they got just, the stamina, can't... right? They have yeah. got the stamina yeah. going you should on. should all there. join it's the marathon. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've been, look, I mean, look at this. It's, wait, it's a, it, they're copying the message from like seven different people and they've put it into one message. Yeah. Did I tell you about the, maybe mm. last time I was on Tea Time, I already talked about this, but I told you about the player that, uh, well, you were there, like, in the Discord call with me when I encountered this player. There, there was mm. a player that popped a mentor tag on a semi-failing Octavine yeah. and was just like, let's go, let's blast, let's get this. And they had, like, a thousand achievement points, like, they're a brand new player, basically. Mm. And they, they, they just rallied the troops and like, go, somebody go west, somebody go, they, you know, they're in the map chat, giving directions. It was awesome. And so afterwards I was like, why don't you have a tag? And they're like, oh, I just, I can't afford one. I don't have any gold. And so I went to map chat and was like, everybody mail this person gold so they can get a commander tag. Everybody do it now. And then I, I put my money where my mouth is. I sent them a hundred gold. And I was like, I just send 100 gold, you send gold too. And apparently this guy got the 300 gold. Oh, very nice. And he immediately bought the commander tag. And, he, <laughs> and he's, he, he's been messaging me every once in a while. And he's just like, today, you know, I, I want to pay this back. Like, I really want to make sure that I'm paying it forward. So, you know, I ran these meta events and I've been doing this. And I just accidentally ran into him one day again, like two weeks after this has occurred. And he's still in Auric Basin teaching Grinding people how to do Octovine. all of the events. No, not even the Octovine. He's doing the events beforehand and guiding players through and teaching them how to do all of the events and giving like semi detailed instructions. And you, the you whole know, time I'm thinking, man, this guy is blasting. He's got a good attitude. This is, the, this is like peak player. This I completely awesome. agree. Um, I think, I think one of the, the tragedies of, um, of Guild Wars 2 is that almost all players who have that mentality don't play anymore. Um, they're gone. Uh, I, I think players like that are the absolute 
the spine. They are the backbone of any game community, right? Like, that is what you need. Or that is what you need. Uh, and unfortunately, I think that there is definitely a big lack of players like that, uh, for sure. And I, you know, like... <laughs> If I speak, I'm in big trouble, Sneb. Okay, that's all I can say. If you know, if I if I speak, I'm in big trouble. I, I do think that the game drives players like that away, actually. Um, uh, in my opinion, with just the way that things tend to play out. But yeah, it's it's unfortunate. So imagine this: Soto comes out. They have a system that they didn't announce or talk about whatsoever. That essentially makes it so that commanders have bonus map rewards immediately. What happens? I mean, I think that would be good. It would definitely improve participation. But, um, but the, the thing is, is that I, I think that kind of misses the point. A player like that doesn't need a reward. Uh, if you need a reward, you aren't that kind of player. Right? What's your uh, what's, reward? What's interesting what, what's, is that people do, used to do that crap in World versus World. But anyway. <laughs> what, what's, um, what's your reward, right, for SG? Right, like what's my reward for Hardstuck? Except to Bill, okay? <laughs> yeah. Right? I guess... Um, uh... Like, the other thing, you don't need it. You want to do it. Like, and that's the important thing. And, and this is, um... This is why I think we have to be super careful with a lot of these meta conversations that we have. Because we're all like, ah, oh, how can we... How can we fix the system? How do we fix the system? How do we fix the system? Sometimes it ain't the system. Sometimes it's the people in the system. Right, that um, you've got to actually talk about. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that fixing the system can't make it better, but sometimes you've got to go. Actually, the system ain't the primary problem here. Yeah, I I see what you're saying. Yeah. Look, I just yeah. do stuff because I think it's fun. If I the moment that I stop having fun, and every once in a while, if somebody pushes me right to the edge, <laughs> mm. where I'm so close to not having fun anymore, uh, but then something happens that kind of makes it all better or whatever. But as soon as I don't have fun, I'm out because I do this for fun. And I think that other people in similar situations are exactly the same. They do it for fun. And the second that it is no longer fun, they're, they're done. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that there's lots of people that have reached that point. And that, that is the cycle of life. You know, that's, that just is what it is. There are going to be people I'm where fun game, they're man. here for a season and then they're, they're kind of, it's over, right? But I, I've known lots of people who have done similar things to me and they do it for a time. And then they're like, you know what? My time is up. I'm going to go do something else. And that's okay. What is this? NA Ice Wizard, HT HTCM first, dangerous, illegal guild, a monster undead appear, Wise men apply chains, uninstall. <laughs> what do you make of that? What, what does do you... that even mean? I have no idea what that means. I'm not really sure where we're going with this. This is a, yeah. an unhinged copy pasta, I'd say. That is pretty unhinged. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk about the expansion a bit more? What, what, what else have you got for me? What, what have you got about the expansion? The expansion? Yeah. You know, the, the point where oh, you're this, uh, this tea time, like the I'm, podcast. I'm having a hard time, Teapot. I'm having a hard time. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I talked about this last time we were on tea time with mm -hmm. Really Read. Yep. And I just, I don't want to doom and gloom about expansions and stuff. I just don't find that fun. However, I am, I am worried about the expansion, as is evident by everything we've talked about today. I'm a little bit worried because I think it has a lot of potential and lots of the things they've talked about are so exciting, but it's very spread out and I'm confused about what's happening when and, you know, it's only in a few weeks, but, you know, there's, we haven't seen a lot, right? There, I think things seem kind of quiet. Maybe, maybe they're about to go for like the big home run right now. And I, that's what I would anticipate is right before and right at the expansion, you start advertising it like crazy. Like, hey, the expansion's out now. Buy it now. Or, hey, the expansion's in two days. Make sure you buy it so that you can get in right away. But yeah, it's... Uh, I'm a little bit concerned. I think... I actually think that the 
the community has cannibalized and has started to make it worse because people are so negative on the the subreddit that i think it actually like yes there's some stuff that's kind of anti-hype but it's exacerbated by people constantly pointing out how anti-hype it is to the point where people are just like wow i just don't want to engage with this in any way <laughs> yeah it's it's really strange i, I do think that um yeah, I, I feel like it's actually hard to blame people for this, right? Um, because on the one hand, yeah, should we all just basically chill out and see what the hell happens? Yeah, we absolutely probably should. Um, but I also think we have to consider the fact that a lot of players... I, I actually find myself in an incredibly unusual spot as a commentator right now, so I think this is so interesting. Um... <sighs> Because this didn't always used to be the case. I think you're in a similar spot to me. Um, I am actually very detached from the game right now. From Guild Wars 2. And, and I have been for a long time. Uh, and I think this actually has pros and cons. One, I think this actually allows me to be more objective about the game. Uh, but two, sometimes... Um, sometimes it... It means that I have some difficulty communicating um, with the community. Like, for example, um, when I was reading balance notes um, a, a while back, and there were, like, massive nerfs, I was like, oh my god, these nerfs are fucking brutal. And I was just, like, laughing at, like, how insanely brutal they were. And a lot of players were actually quite upset with me, um, because they were like, whoa, how are you laughing at my class being nuked? And I was like, well, I mean, dude... It, it, you know, it, it's just, it is what it is, right? Like, it's getting nerfed, you know? It's a pretty brutal nerf. And the thing is, the, the reason is because I, I don't really care, right, Um, at the end of the day. Like, um, if I play a lot of Necro and Guardian, right? If Necro and Guardian get nerfed, pff, I mean, yeah, okay, there you go, right? I'll just play something else, I guess, right? Um, And... Uh, or I'll just keep playing it. And I don't, I don't really care if it's a little bit weaker because, you know, I'm just, I'm just gaming, right? I'm just blasting. Uh, and I think I, I feel this way about the, the game overall. I'm at the point where... Uh, I'm not I'm not super emotionally invested um in Guild Wars 2. I enjoy playing the game by the way. Uh I I like the game a lot. I may, I really enjoy streaming and making content for the game. But the actual game itself, I'm like, you know what? Game's pretty good, right? You know, game's good. You know, I'm, I'm going to play, right? I'm going to play the game. Um and I, I think this does give me a, a bit of a different perspective and it allows me to again like make I think get a good objective read on what's going on, but it certainly does cause some issues. And I think we have to bear in mind that a lot of players are still extremely invested in the game uh, from that perspective. So everything to um, to uh, uh, these different players is going to feel super different, right? Um, and I do think that ArenaNet and we as content creators and commentators need to understand that perspective as well. Yeah, I. you know what's going to happen here? Yeah. People are going to listen to what you just said, and they're going to hear nothing and just say nothing except that you don't care as much about the game is essentially what they're going to hear, and they're mm. just going to attack you for that, which is, I think, super sad. Because I would agree that I, I feel like I'm in a similar place. I'm, I'm slightly less emotionally attached to the game itself, but mm. I would argue that I'm almost more attached to the community. I care about my discord and my friends in the community and how they feel and i enjoy building that that part of the community a lot more and i'm not i'm not as fussed about whether i got thousand gold here or thousand gold there or if mm. i win the ecto gamble or not i just don't really care i have everything i would ever need um i actually think this is this has affected my enjoyment of the game a little bit though because I used to want to be a lot better at the game. Yeah. I used to want to, I used to ask way more questions. I used to invite way more commentary from other people to tell me how to do something better. I used to uh, practice a little bit more. I used to try new builds a lot more. I used to actually care about the rotations a lot more. <laughs> but now I actually think I've gotten worse at the game and the reason is, and, and again, I, I'm going to say this, it's going to sound really harsh, but just bear with me. It's because there's just nothing, it just doesn't really matter. 
Like if I if I do 40k DPS on Scourge, who cares? Because if I do 35k, it's way more than enough to slay every single boss. Uh, mechanics are way more important anyway, because there's no real rage and rage time and rage timers in a lot of the the raid bosses. So I'm kind of in this weird. I, I don't even really know how to explain it. I have this weird psychological loop where I go, hmm, I could invest some time in trying to learn how to play new class or learning how to play this class better. But why would I? Because what I'm doing now is more than sufficient. It's not just sufficient. What I'm doing now is way more than sufficient. So what's, what's kind of the point? And... Uh, I think some people really enjoy that. Perhaps that's like where all their joy enjoyment comes out of the game. But I just realized that that's not really me anymore, right? Like I, I way more enjoy the, hey, let's connect these people together, get them on a team and get them progressing so that they can figure out how to do some of these bosses and have a good time, right? Yeah. And so I, I, for I, me, I, mm. the, I used to have fun doing that stuff, but there was always a purpose and it was because I really struggled to get a lot of that stuff done. Right, I I wasn't the best gamer, so I was struggling to kill Doom. I remember when I got my first Doom kill. I remember when I got my first Doom CM kill, and I was struggling, and I was trying to figure it out, and my DPS was really low. I remember when I had the nickname the 15K Hollow because I could barely hit 15K DPS on half the fights. And uh, now that I've kind of reached those goals, I'm like, huh, that was really fun, but now I don't really have those same goals, and so... For me, the focus has shifted. Yeah, and I actually want to clarify, guys, this is not burnout. I actually hate it when people say that um, the way a lot of veteran players is burnout. This is a, a failure oh, to yes, actually... I'm not burnt out. No, 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 I, I just want to... Because this, yeah. this, this is a failure of empathy on the part of the person who is saying that. Um, uh, what Sneb is communicating here is that he enjoys growth, right? He enjoys um, improvement. Um, but realistically now, a lot of the work he's going to put into improving is going to have um, no effect on his gameplay in a lot of ways. Huh. Um, like, it doesn't do anything. And, and I think this is why it's important. Um, I think this is a lot of issues that uh, players run into, like the big veterans, right, in the game, is that a lot of what they do in the game kind of doesn't do anything anymore, um, essentially, right? Like, it just, you you won't really see any performance improvement there like you'll see like a bigger number in terms of the dps meter and honestly that can be fun to grind for if you're into that sort of thing uh but really the game is not presenting you a challenge that requires you to do this right and, and i i'm i think me and seb were both obviously acutely aware this is a, a very niche concern but i mean look hey you're watching this show you're here for our opinion right like i don't know i don't know yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we're gonna give yeah, you. I, we're gonna not, give you our take. Not, yeah. To be clear, we're also not saying that it yeah. does nothing. What what I'm trying to express yeah. is that I've realized that uh, yeah. it's diminishing returns for me at this point. The enjoyment that I get out of getting that extra 0.1 percent or one percent or whatever, it's it's getting lower and lower and lower. And I find myself enjoying the building other teams and coaching other teams. You know, I get way higher returns on my like, you know, enjoyment by doing that so it's not that it's fruitless or worthless or anything like that it's not it, there's still huge benefit to improving your gameplay but for me my individual brain just me i look at it and i go huh well i can go do this or i can go do this but this is just the bigger net benefit to me right now i don't think that's um, necessarily an evil thing or anything either. That just is what it is. I'm quite happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I guess what what I'm saying with with my thing as well is that I actually still really enjoy the game, guys. I actually still even try hard the game. You know, I'm doing weekly strike mission challenge modes. We're trying to push for times there on our speed kills. 
I'm trying to uh, like I'm still progressing with the raid speed run. I'm making a lot of content for the game right now. I'm really working on a lot of the projects I have here. But like what's what what I'm trying to communicate, and, and I think this is where where me and some are very aligned, is that a lot of the enjoyment um that we're getting is actually not from the game itself. It's actually from meta elements around the game. So in other words, it's about community, it's about content creation, it's about um interacting with other people. I think that's where things tend to go over time anyway with a lot of veteran players. However, I think it the game the game does still need to present things i think for veteran players to engage with in my opinion i think it still needs to provide some kind of aspirational content otherwise it does lead to this very detached perspective uh, i think and, and that's yeah that's that's where, definitely where i'm at like i have very much made my peace that realistically guild wars 2 is not going to be capable of engaging me as a player um probably for the foreseeable future it, it's gonna have a really hard time doing that um because it's simply the type of content that arena are focused on is just not aimed at my uh, aimed at me right i am not the target demographic um for guild wars 2 oh this is gonna get spicy isn't it this is the, the youtube comments they're gonna like this um yeah it's not aimed at me and i think there's nothing wrong with me admitting that i, I actually don't like the fact that i am actually thinking i'm gonna get shit for even saying that right for, for even saying that I have accepted the game isn't aimed at me. Like, I feel like that should be a statement that you should almost be like praised for making, right? Like you the, have, the, you have, thing, you're being yeah. honest. You're being honest. Yes, honesty. Look, it's, like, it's, look yeah. it's very easy to say nothing and to not be honest mm. or to just flat out lie. <laughs> lie by omission or commission. Mm. Uh, it takes a little bit of courage just be completely upfront and honest with yourself and put yourself out there because it's making yourself very vulnerable. People can think whatever they want, have any kind of opinion on that. My, my personal view is if you're just like, yeah, this is just how I feel. I, what, what do you, what do you, what do people want? You, you could lie to them. Is that really what they want? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you know it's uh, it's it's an interesting meme, right? And I, I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying they should even focus on this. In fact, I think they shouldn't. Um, they shouldn't focus on this. But I, I just wanted to I kind of wanted to explain um some of the context behind the way that I'm viewing the game right now, and some of my comments, like my commentary and analysis on the game. It is coming from a slightly more detached perspective, um, regarding the game. Uh, it's not that you know it's not that I'm being callous, right? Or that I'm just like you know I'm just like openly mocking the game or whatever. I don't think I'm doing that at all. Actually, I, I think I overwhelmingly have a very positive view of Guild Wars 2 right now, um, in my opinion. But it's just like, I do come from a slightly more detached perspective. And I think that combined with my usual style of communication, which definitely is very sarcastic and very ironic, um, <laughs> it can definitely look a little weird sometimes. I, uh, I get it, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> We do, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think that having a good bit of separation, um, I, I think when you get into, when you get to the point where a lot of you, like your um, emotional happiness is tied into a video game, it's probably not good. Um, it was yeah, definitely the I, case. I actually... Like, I, I was like very invested, um, like... This the big turning point because this is not anything new. It's definitely got a bit more extreme recently, mostly because I've been playing other games. Um, but this is basically I lost a lot of my attachment to Guild Wars Two um, after Wing Seven released um, because I was like, okay, yeah, this clearly is th this is not the focus of the game. Fair enough. I, I basically went to go play WoW after that. Um, but yeah, I, I at that time I was fucking miserable. I was miserable, Sneb. Okay, I was miserable because I was like, man, the game is not what I want it to be. It's horrible, and I really wish they'd change it. Now I'm like, you know what? I just play a video game, man. I just press my buttons, and away we go. Right? Like here it is. You know, it feels good. We're blasting what you know, blasting Guild Wars Two. We're blasting WoW. We're having a good time. I'm gaming. I'm playing my Necromancer. Playing my Mech. Okay, my guardian, you know, like the the mesmer, right? We we just press some buttons, dude. Is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll share I'll share something a little bit personal because I think it's yeah. it's kind of important. I I put a lot of my happiness into the game for a long time. I think. 
Uh, now I, 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 I'm going to share again, this is very personal. So I'm, I'm putting myself into the vulnerability hangover mode perhaps, and people can make fun of me if they want. I've accepted that. But in, in 2020, I went through a really hard time. Like I was, I was very, very depressed. I had a lot of anxiety. I was going through grad school and I was having a really hard time and the pandemic was going on. I had a new baby. Everything was very new. It was very hard for me. And in Canada, a lot of things completely shut down. Like you weren't allowed to go to the gym. You weren't allowed to go anywhere. And there were all these rules and it really messed me up. Mm. And so I spent almost all of my time in Tyria. I spent all of my time trying to drown out all of those thoughts and using like extreme escapism. Yeah. And it was a community where I didn't have a lot of community uh, in my life at the time. I'd also gone through a major faith crisis and I lost a lot of community that way. And so I was very, I felt very alone. I, I was really struggling. It's going to a lot of therapy and trying to figure things out and try new things to try to get out of that. But I found a bit of a refuge in Tyria and that's when I started streaming the Drakkar runs. So I started doing that uh, and I was so happy because just because of the community. I just met so many awesome people and people were very kind to me and they liked what I was doing and they validated that. And, and so I kept doing it. Um, but I put everything, like I, I kind of dumped all of my emotions and I just like only wanted to be, have this escapism after a while. Uh, and that's, I gained a ton of weight during that time because I did like, didn't want to do anything else. And cause I, you literally couldn't go to the gyms and mm -hmm. you literally couldn't do anything in Canada. Um, and so one day I just, you know, I, it took, took me like a year and a half to get through that. Uh, it took a long time and then eventually I did break through it. And ever since then I sort of gone on this incline of like, huh, the way that I see the, the community and the way that I see the game, it's become a lot healthier. Mm. So I really appreciate Guild Wars 2, especially for how it helped me when I was going through a really difficult time. I really love the community for giving me a mm. place to be myself uh, and to appreciate me for being me when I was having such a difficult time. Uh, but now when I look at it, I go, <laughs> I go, I'm capable of a lot more than just escaping in a video game. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really what goes through my head. I know that sounds maybe weird, but I just, I, I look at it and go, I'm capable of so much more than this. I know that I can do more and hit the gym, right? I complained about how I was overweight and I wasn't happy forever. And then one day I was like, I know I can do this. It's just about making fewer excuses. And I just went and did it. So um, I was getting massive. And and I'm still doing it. Am I perfect at it? By no means. Am I learning every day? Absolutely. And to me, that's all that matters. That growth mindset thing that I always talk about. Yeah, I really try to live it. I'm not perfect at it, but I really believe in it. And so I, I'm on this personal journey right now where I've been, where I reflect on my experiences over the past three and a half, four years. And I go, man, I went from being in the super dark place and Tyria was my refuge. It was a place I could go and feel safe to Tyria basically saying, Sneb, um, you don't need us anymore, but we're happy that you're here. <laughs> right. That's kind of, like, yeah. Right. Like I don't, I don't need it anymore. Essentially to be an escapism, I can mm. go and do other things. And I think that that's really exciting. Um, but anyway, very personal, but that's kind of how I feel now is that uh, for, for me in Guild Wars 2, I've kind of crossed this plane where uh, I'm just happy that, to hang out with my friends and I like the game still and I play the game, but I've also got all these new IRL goals and things for myself to work on. And I'm doing the half marathon in December and just sort of excited about all of that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that's a pretty epic story. I think a lot of people can relate to that, to be honest. Um, I, I would certainly say that I have a similar experience um, regarding Guild Wars 2 as well, for sure, with, with the community stuff. And that's, that has definitely transformed my approach and thought process when it comes to like how the game is. 
Like, to me, and I think this is actually where we have to be a little bit careful with our thinking. This is what maybe, I think I've maybe come up with a better way of wording it. To me, my enjoyment of the game will not go down a lot, even if the game isn't very good. And I think that's something that we have yeah. to be careful about, right? I, I think that's a good way of putting it, right? We, um, we have fewer peaks and valleys, right? Yeah. Because I yeah. was so invested in the game. Mm. Look, when Ice Brute Saga yeah. was announced, I was so upset, right? Mm. Like, I was just so angry yeah. because I, had, I, was inv I was right at the start of investing, like, everything in the game. Like, I was so mentally in it, right? Mm. Yeah. Um. But I, I don't have those peaks and valleys anymore. And so when you're laughing about the balance, like I feel kind of the same way. I'm like, oh boy, that's gonna be rough for a couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I just in, enjoy it for what it is and move forward. Uh, and I understand completely why people feel differently and why they might get upset or they you, they mm. might think, oh, you guys can't empathize with us or whatever. I can. Uh, I just am in a sort of a different spot and where I just enjoy it for what it is. And I recognize that it's imperfect and I'm okay with that. My peaks and my valleys are, you know, they, they were like this and now they've come to this, mm, yeah. right? I I've achieved the state of equilibrium or something. <laughs> the chat has completely lost it. I mean, the, the chat is unhinged. I, I just want to point out that while you were giving, honestly, a really heartfelt emotional story, they were spamming pee pee poo poo. <laughs> no, I, I like it. I accept it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think, um, well, I'm, this is like deep time with Sneb. Some, sometimes people describe my streams as those like 2 a.m. talks. Yeah, that's kind of how I am all the time. Yeah. But I, I just, I, I have a lot of gratitude, really, um, for the, the community and for all of those times. I'm really grateful for it. I don't think people often get to see kind of how we think about things and they really just have this really small window into who we are or what we stand for. And I, I often wish that I could give people, especially those that are obscenely critical of me, a little bit, a little bit more of a glimpse into who I am and mm. what I care about. Yeah, this is definitely the, the content creator thing, right? The, the content yeah. creator thing is weird here. Um, especially when you've been playing the game for a, a very, very long time and the game does evolve for you. Um, it ends up looking really weird. I think a lot of people go, they look at me and go like, oh man, um, this guy just doesn't enjoy the game anymore. Or like, oh, this guy's super burned out. And I understand why. Um, I think a lot of it is because they're, they don't exactly understand um, what's going on. I think some of it is definitely projection as well, to be honest, uh, especially, especially a lot of veteran players. Oh. Um, but no, I, I don't think, I don't think I am burned out on the game whatsoever. It's that I, I engage with it differently um, at this point. I, I think in a in a healthier way um, than certainly I used to. Uh, but I think it, it definitely is a little bit weird. Uh, I can understand why it looks really, really weird to see a lot of the, the content credits for Guild Wars 2 making statements like, I am really not that invested in the game anymore, right? Like, Or at least not in the same way. Uh, but I, I would actually argue that I think this happens with anyone who plays the game a lot. Like, If you play any game for a large amount of time, it will stop being about the game. Uh, it will start being uh, about the things around the game instead. Uh, I think that's almost inevitable with almost any game. I, w I would say, funnily enough, with the exception of competitive games, um, and I think the reason why a lot of people get to this point, because I think this is not just co a content creator thing, Seb. I feel like this is actually a lot of um, a lot of veteran players, like players who kind of progress. They kind of climb the skill mountain, right, and get to the top, um, and they they get better, they get more experience, they get more loot, they get all the legendary armor. I think the reason why this happens is because Guild Wars Two isn't competitive. Um, in fact, it's kind of the opposite. It's the opposite of competitive, um, which, by the way, is not collaborative. Uh, something can be incredibly competitive and also incredibly collaborative at the same time. Common misconception. Um, the lack of competitive stuff like does not fuel this like consistent engagement, I think, uh, very well whatsoever, which I think ultimately is a big part of why a lot of the, uh, the endgame scenes tend to collapse um, over time uh, is because the game just isn't that competitive. Uh, whereas I think games that are competitive and have like a really intense competitive element or scene, um, 
I think the fire burns brighter and for longer as well with these things. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yes. Yeah, I, I've noticed that there's, there's kind of this trend where <laughs> um, pe people are very, very... You know, because here, here's what you could do, Teapot, right? You could say, because you're one of the bigger content creators for Guild Wars 2, you could go out and you could say nothing, <laughs> right? You could just slowly start shifting and playing other games. You could say nothing. You could say nothing. And you know what? Some people might ask you about it and you could just ignore them. And then eventually <laughs> people will just stop asking and people would never, never know. But I think, okay, what is this chat? And anyway, it's... I, okay, I what think, the fuck even is this shit? What are you guys typing? <laughs> it's just like random numbers. Honestly, you guys have got to stop. I'm sh know. I'm shutting it down. Chat, behave yourselves, or it's over for you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is you guys are completely out of control with this shit. This makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. The YouTube unchained. comments are gonna be so confused. They're gonna be like, "What is happening?" <laughs> yeah. What on earth are they talking about? Look, Guys, look at, Matt is making it worse. Listening. Like pee pee poo poo. Like what even the is The YouTube this? comments are gonna think that Twitch is insane. Well, Stop. I mean, would they be wrong? <laughs> They're not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you're only validating their feelings further. Mm. Yeah. You could. Anyway, where I was going is you could say nothing. Uh, but I think that there's value in being authentic with yourself and your audience, even at a risk to perhaps losing some people because they go, oh, this is the guy that I like. He plays Guild Wars 2. Now he doesn't, now he, his view on it has changed. Okay, well, I'm, I, whatever, right? I, I respect mm. transparency. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's something that I value very highly. This is getting very meta now. This is like the, one of the most meta tea times ever. And you know what? I like yeah. that. Yeah, um, yeah. It's something that I value a lot. Like if I, I do not like I, I guess it would be like lying by a mission, right? I, if, if I have an opinion about something, um, I think I should be honest, right? I think I should say, yeah, this is, this is how I'm feeling about the game right now. I think it's, in a way, it's like wrong for me to not do that, uh, especially given like where I'm positioned in the Guild Wars 2 community, right? I'm, I'm one of the larger creators. Um, and that means that people are obviously going to engage with my content to kind of get a feel for the game or get like, see where the game is at, right? And all that kind of stuff. So I feel like in a way, I have a little bit of a, of a duty, a bit of a responsibility to be as honest as I possibly can regarding like what I think about the game, like where, you know, like how I'm feeling currently and so on um, with that stuff. Because if I don't, then I think that's a bit weird uh, in a way. That's it's almost like not right to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that being honest with yourself requires that you also be honest with your audience. Hmm. And I think that's very challenging because it's very easy to hide how you feel. But at some point, you probably won't feel very comfortable with that. Anyway, yes, very, very meta. Mm. Yeah. Very meta. Because yeah. you know what? If I, can, if I can help even a few people make it to the acceptance phase, Snab, it's worth <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see so I many we... people in the denial phase, in the copium phase, in the doom phase. And trust me, you do not want to be in the doom phase, guys. Like, you do not want to be in the goddamn doom phase. Let, let me tell you that. It is, um, it's a fate worse than death. You've got to get out of that ASAP. If you think you're in the doom phase, get out now. Okay? You must escape immediately. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be nothing but pain and suffering, to be honest. I, I grew up in an environment where I was taught that if you're, if you're like really angry about something like this, or you're like really sad about it or whatever, that my parents would probably tell me to get out of my head and to go mm. serve others. Okay. That's kind of how I was raised. It was like, okay, well, you're focusing so much on yourself and how like, it's almost selfish. Go, go and just try to do something good for someone else to make life a little bit brighter. That's how I was always raised. I think part of that is reflected in why I do the SG stuff because I go, hey, I'm going to focus less on what I think and focus just more on building others. And I get just a lot of joy out of that. But yeah. I was raised to always want to serve. 
That's a quote. Yeah. That's a, that's, yeah, that's something. You know, I enjoy that the chat is now emote only. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting a few, uh, putting a few emotes. You know, they're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they can't even put peepos because they don't actually officially count as emotes. Um, but anyway, I, I think that's, I think we're kind of getting to the point where uh, we've got to wrap it up. Uh, do you, to, do, do you think done. that, was there something that you wanted to, to bring up at all in the tea time? Something you wanted to talk about? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, th I guess I Ooh. just, I'm tired of seeing people be sad. Yeah, I, I don't like it. All be happy. Yeah, I don't like I, it. I, I, I just be happy. I'll say it. I, I definitely feel drained by all yeah. of the doom. The doom is draining I me. I too. I feel drained. And, and I know for a fact that there are many other people that feel the same. Mm. And they are taking breaks from the game and stuff because they, they just feel drained playing it because yeah. they're surrounded by constant negativity. So my view is... If you are really having a hard time with that, try to focus on something bright, something that makes you happy. That isn't to disregard all things that make you sad, but it's to try to shift the balance a little bit so that it's it's more equal. Mm. Right now, I think the scale is tipped very far to the, the negative. And I would like to see things be just a little bit more positive. Yeah. I definitely oh, that's, would. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Gotta bring and also some recognize that life also exists outside of the game too. So if you're, if you're so full, I get people are passionate. I'm passionate about it too. Uh, but there are also other things that you can do that if this isn't making you happy, you can also focus on other things that will make you happy while you wait for uh, a bright spot here. <laughs> There you go. Also, think, um, it's about 50-50 if I go to the meetup in Seattle right now. Ooh. About 50-50. I might go. Okay. I might go. So That's a good place to kind of wrap things up. Yeah. Got some final thoughts say there. say hi to me. <laughs> from Snub. Yeah, go and meet Snub in real life, guys. You'll be intimidated by his muscular stature by the time uh, the meetup is out. Uh, I don't know about that. I need to cut now yeah. until... Y yeah, exactly. Just cut. like fully cut. Just be absolutely ripped by the time you get there. Like massive ab workouts every day. Just go there shirtless. <laughs> just just, in, just honestly scare people, right, with what's going on. Uh, but anyway, I think that'll about wrap things up now for us. Hope you enjoyed the tea time. Bit of a weird one. Let us know what you think in the comments, of course. Uh, and Sneb, before we uh, head off here, tell us a little bit uh, about where we can find more. Yeah. Find more. Slash Snebzor, S-N-E-B-Z-O-R. You can also check out mm. our community, Skane Gang, at discord.gg slash Skane Gang. S-K-E-I-N-G-A-N-G. And spoiler alert, we're getting new... We're getting new logo and stuff. So that should be coming in the next few days, I think. Uh, and then we'll also have uh, merch and shirts and stuff, so people can, you know, what's, what's the what's the term? <laughs> Support buy, the goose or like buy the <laughs> wear the goose? Yeah, they can buy the merch. Yeah. So that's been requested for a long time. Excited to do that. I might even make the Sneb Slug shirt while I'm there. Oh, mm. the Sneb <laughs> Slug shirt. That's big, actually. Uh, anyway, be sure to check out all those links there. And you know what? Follow the stream as well. Subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a comment. Let you know, uh, you know we covered a lot of topics today. Tell us. What do you think about the expansion model for Guild Wars 2? What do you think about the Doom? What do you think about, I don't know, DPS meters, I guess? Performance metrics? Okay? It's going to be great content, guys. It's going to be fantastic stuff. But anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to come back and watch every single day, every single tea time. Okay? All over the place. All the videos. All the content. Stay up to date. Come watch on stream. And hey, you know, me and Seb talk all the time on stream. If you, if you want like micro tea times, it's probably happening as well. So be sure to be here every time. But until then, that's going to be about it, it for us. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will indeed, as always, see you next time.
Take it easy, gamers. We're out.